Hello friends, my name is Steven, and today in this exciting Mystery Media tutorial, I'm going to be taking a look at using the primary wheels versus the curves inside DaVinci Resolve, specifically for your primary correction. I've gotten a lot of questions about when do I use which for what, and now we're going to answer it. So, short answer, I tend to default to the primary wheels just because of the speed, especially because I'm using a control surface. So, even without that, it is pretty quick to go ahead and use a scroll wheel and dial these in. Make them feel pretty nice. A little quicker than fiddling around with this, not really too much with the mouse, but whenever you have a control surface, let me show you something. So you're not going to be able to see what's going on, but take a look at the values down here, and I can really easily, boom, there it is. It's about where I want it. This is a little bit dark there. But just like that, I can get you know the first part of this done. So that is the main reason why I go for the primary wheels first. Let's go and explore a little more the advantages and disadvantages of each. So. Lift, gamma, and gain, and offset. Lift corresponds to doing this action on your curves. So if we do that, you see, that's what it looks like, which is the same as if we're doing this. And let's bring up some scopes just so you can really see what's going on here. So watch especially our waveforms. Pull this in. We're just bringing those down. Same thing here. Our gain. This does the same thing, but with your white point. So we stretch up here. With our curves, it's just like doing this move. And then our gamma is a little more complicated, but it's just like moving a point on here up. And the offset is a control that you don't really have on the curves, but it's very useful, and that moves the entire waveform up uniformly. So this is good for correcting exposures. Maybe you'll get something in that looks a little bit like this. You can move it up until it's about where you want it, and then go ahead and grade away to your heart's content. So now, the reason why you'd use curves is you get so much more control, because here you have three points to work from and then an offset. But here, you can do all sorts of things. So we can really dial in exactly what we want the luminance of our image to do be really precise about it, especially in Resolve 16 where you have this nice histogram to look at. So you can really smooth out that and then bump up our highlights some and really change around the look of the image a lot. But that takes a lot more time and you don't always need to do all this work because like with this footage, it looks totally fine. I'll go ahead and hit Alt S and then I'll disable this node and I'll use a control panel again to really, there's about where we want it. Nice. And then as far as doing non-luminance adjustments, so chrominance adjustments, I think it makes a little more sense sometimes to be able to move this around, not just being constrained by your RGB controls, but being able to really pick the color that you want. So if we move our highlights a little more towards blue, and then we counteract that here, and then go back, that's a little easier to do with our wheels than trying to go and add blue to the shadows, take it out of the midtones, but that makes it yellow. And back to the highlights, but that makes it two blues. We need to add green in also. Change that around. And this is just a whole big hassle that ends up not looking very good. But then also along with that, you can do really cool look development stuff with this. So, you know, old school vintage looks, you can dial in real quick. You can really make it exactly how you want it, which is much harder to do with the primaries wheels. So you want some back there, back out there. You can really dial that in. So the TLDR of this all is the color wheels are fast, but give you less control. The curves are slower, but give you more control. That's why I start with the primary wheels. If I can't make it happen there, then I'll go to the curves and really refine things out. So anyway, I hope this answered some questions. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your fans like comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Mixed Media YouTube channel if you want even more goodness. Check out mixedmedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of LUTs and light leaks and stock footage and other things that'll help make your job easier, faster, etc. Let's go ahead and just for, for kicks, boom. Drop a LED on here. Look at this. Don't even need to do any work anymore. We'll bring our gain down some. Bring our highlights in there. Nice. Looking cool. Look at this. It's a cool look. So that is 
Hipster 10 from the Swiss Lutz Pack, available at mistermedia.com slash products. So once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. I have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.